could you explain the, the T-Sherry to everybody? Uh, because you explained it so well, I think I'd be doing a disservice by saying it myself. Oh, well, that's uh, putting a lot of pressure on me now. The last time <laughs> that I talked like, in really in depth uh, about T-Shirts was seriously on the 5555 tour, which is like a couple of months um, back. But um, I think you said it really um, good here. When everybody, uh, somebody ends a stake, right? And this is exactly the word that we need to concentrate on because the smart contract by itself cannot do too much, you know? It can only inflate by 3.69%. And now um, the smart contract is written in a way where this inflation of 3.69% goes only to those people in HEX that believe in the system the most. And what do I mean by that? It's only the staker class. So if you have HEX locked up for a period of time, then you have T-shares. And those T-shares, they grant you HEX every single day. But now we have to say that you can only get to your hex once your staking period has ended that, by the way, you have set yourself, right? And now the T-share is something that um, simulates the compounding interest that we have in the hex ecosystem. The idea is to stake out longer than everybody else because when everybody else ends their stake, they are burning their T-shares and you are still holding on to them and therefore your T-shares get more and more expensive. And this little gimmick here, this understanding, it took me six months to really, really grasp what are T-shares, how do they work, and what is the deflationary character of those T-shares. Yeah. And now, yeah. when we were on the 5555 tour, we were trying to really bring it down to one sentence. So I will now try to bring it up from my memory again, because every single time when somebody ends a stake, the smart contract has to make sure that this specific staker cannot restake the same amount of hex plus principal for the same amount of time and get more T-shares than he had before because longer always pays better. And because this has to be true, the smart contract has to now adjust the T-share price to a number high enough where this specific staker cannot get the T-shares he had before and therefore he is now set and maybe restakes longer. This is a really good opportunity to preserve T-shares. That was beautiful, and I'm going to make a short out of that. Uh, thank you thank so you. much. That That is a great short, um, and that was very beautifully said, and that's really what, what uh, what's what's so great. It, it, it incentivizes it incentivizes not selling, and therefore the price goes up, and you get to benefit, benefit from the price appreciation because you don't sell. That's really the feedback. Uh, would you want to speak about that a little bit? Yeah, and then, um, you know, what I did not mention yet is that at one point, because the T-shirt price only goes up, um, you are protected by the system. And I think this is pretty cool. I don't hear Hexagons talking about that too much. So when I started staking Hex three years ago, the T-shirt price was only 10,000, between 10,000 and 11,000. So it was really low. Today, the T-shirt price is already two and a half X higher than that. It is at 25,000 plus something. So today you need more hex to get the same amount of T-shares. So if somebody comes in today, he has two and a half X harder of a time to accumulate those T-shares if we don't talk about the price at all and only in hex and T-share terms. So what does that mean? Somebody with more economic mass than I had in the past, it has now a harder time grabbing those T-shares. And now what does it mean if somebody comes into the system, grabs a lot of T-shares. Well, this means now he diluted my T-shares because as more T-shares there are in the system, as less, less hex payout do I get. Yeah. But at the same time, it, it's good though because uh, that means that the price of your hex appreciates. So Probably, well, yeah. And if, if somebody is able to gather a lot of T-shares, he probably has to buy a lot of hex on the open market, which pumps the price. And then locking up the hex, obviously, I'm a big, big fan of that. So the, the uh, in theory, what happens is, yes, everybody gets now less hex because a big player entered the market, but also he pumped the price before. And he also staked, which is always really, really uh, positive for the overall market. Because in hex, the... Um, T-shirt price only goes up. What, what we have seen is that also the confidence in the market goes up and up and up. When I started staking hex, the average staking duration was 4.5 years. Today, it's 6.5 years. 
And if you really understand how this weighted, uh, weighted average works, then you understand you need to have a lot of volume and a lot of 15 year stakes to make this average duration um, being longer and longer. Yeah, it's just, uh, it, it, uh, it, 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 and also it, so it, it, it constantly, it constantly uh, um, incentivizes delayed gratification. It's like compound delayed gratification. But with a with a fifteen year limit, but it is it is very great. And uh, also another thing is when a big whale comes in and stakes, right? I mean that that represents uh, buy in of the system, and that means that when the price comes back down, he's probably going to buy more. So like I came in when the price was very high, and now the price and and you know I staked, so I couldn't sell. Now the price is down. You know my attention is on it, and I continue to dollar cost average. So that's like really another thing. It's like you're not just in it for uh, when you when you make that buy you're not just in it for then you're in it for a long time and you're going to continue to dca yeah and, and i think this is a really good point like when i bought my hex three years ago every single day i bought my hex i also staked my hex today obviously i would not recommend doing that back then i just had no idea what i'm doing i was just doing what richard hart was saying right uh, but um, anyways um my point is that um, nowadays like the staking strategy is a little bit different but um, i wish i would have staked out way way longer from the beginning now i have a lot of stakes coming out in this two years three years mark and i actually do not need that hex so what am i doing i'm restaking and i think here the philosophy is amazing um, when you compared bitcoin to hex where bitcoin miners when they get their bitcoin they have so many externalities they need to sell their bitcoin to make up for all of that well me as a hex staker i don't have those externalities i can live my um, hexagon lifestyle more free freely and i can even think about getting more t-shirts back yeah that's beautiful let me maybe just uh let me just i figured i'd i I'd, I'd, I'd present you with the uh with the, the classic question that people hear about when they say like hey how come People say like Bitcoin mining is uh, more legitimate and has sort of this like moral high ground, so to speak, because because there's real economic energy. It costs money to do it, and and T shares there's there's no economic energy, so it's, it's there's no real value behind it. I, I would want you to speak on that. Yeah, people that say that they do not have any idea how crypto works, right? Um, they don't understand the T share system, and they probably hate on alts in general. Those are probably Bitcoin maximalists. Because I'm telling you something that I totally hate about Bitcoin, which is I cannot mine it. If I want to mine it, I need to buy expensive hardware from China, enriching those companies, right? And what they will they do? They will first wait months and months and months in order to send me this hardware. And when I'm getting, I'm already lost so much opportunity because I had to put my money there. It was not working for those months. And then when I start mining Bitcoin, my hardware is outdated. It takes forever, if so, to make this money back and you're never in the profit. Well, with Hex, on the other hand, you don't have any externalities and it's really inclusive. You, me, all my friends, we can do it today. I can tell about uh, this to my friends and family and we can start earning decentralized crypto. How amazing is that? You cannot do that with Bitcoin. And this is my biggest problem. Yeah, well, well said. And uh, I love how you're just straight to the point, really uh, dissecting it uh, beautifully. Um, there's no reason. There's no reason for uh, you know having un unnecessary expenses incurred in order to earn inflation. It's just for me. It's uh, it, it's like an other middleman, you know, and a middleman who provides the mining <laughs> equipment. And those guys are also not legit, you know. <laughs>